Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Love Joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button so that way you can uh, check out the other videos. And if you've been here once or twice, thanks so much for coming back and getting creative. In today's video, we're going to do a really nice beginner painter. So this is good for those of you um, that don't have a whole lot of experience with the painting process. And I fully believe that with more and more practice, you get more comfortable with the process of painting. So that's what these videos are for. For your supplies, there is going to be a link in the description box below. So check out what you need, grab the supplies, and then kind of pick up the video for the painting portion. You're also going to see a link below for a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to transfer their image onto their canvas and not have to stress out about drawing and you can jump right in and focus on the painting process. There is also going to be a video on how to transfer your traceable with carbon paper um, or even graphite paper. When you're ready to take your skills to the next level, check out my online school paintwithlovejoy.com and check out the Paint Your Pet course. Um, in that course you will be painting from your own photograph and you'll learn the value scale of your pet's fur. And the, it's a kind of a basic skill that once you learn that, you can actually apply that to many other creative processes. And when you paint something that you love, you actually put a little more energy into it and everybody loves their pets. So like I said, when you're ready to take your skills to your next level, check out that course and um, enjoy the process of painting your pet. With this video and any of my videos on the channel, you have full permission to switch out colors and make this your own. Just use this video as a base um, and get extra creative with your paintings. So uh, I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. guys it's gonna be another fun painting today so grab all your supplies head on over to where you have your setup and make sure you turn on your favorite music and as always make sure you take your progress photos now once you have your traceable transfer to your surface uh, you'll notice on mine I do have a black outline and I just used a sharpie marker for that you do not have to do that for your painting all right so we're gonna start off um, close to our cello players, close to the figure. So we're going to start with yellow and white and about equal parts, yellow and white. And I am using this medium flat brush. You could even use a small pointy brush if you need to, but we're going to surround the figure with this light color and we're going to radiate um, out from the figure with darker colors. And we'll be working into our earthy browns um, and a little bit of black thrown in there. So remember to breathe as you're doing this and just kind of be mindful as you are coming up close to the outline from the traceable. Um, if you happen to overlap it, don't freak out. Um, by the time we fill in the figure, the paint will be dry and we can just place paint right on top of that. So if you're one of my first time painters and you're using student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply the paint a little bit thicker. Um, it'll just make it a little bit easier for you. And here you can see where we grab some yellow and kind of put them in a few random spots. And then now we're using the yellow and raw sienna. Now, as you go through the video today, you're going to be strengthening your power of observation. So I want you to observe where I place each of the colors and mimic that on your painting to the best of your ability. So now we're moving into the raw sienna and again, just kind of getting darker. And you can tell that I am using student grade paint. There is some transparency. Uh, we will be putting a second layer of these colors on there um, and I'll be applying it a little bit thicker. And here you can see where we grab some white, just kind of blending a little bit of the area together. And as you're mixing the colors, this is called wet on wet blending. Um, if you are inclined to finger paint to do this, go right ahead. There's something really nice and tactile about um, mixing the paint with your fingers. So just grab some extra paper towels if you choose to do that. And as you're doing this, you'll also notice that the pressure of your brush makes a difference. So light pressure makes it kind of smooth, more pressure, your brush strokes will show up. 
and the background is still wet. We went into that white paint and we're going real right next to the figure. Uh, we kind of want the background to be lighter next to her so there's a little bit more of a pop color. And you could place that right on top of that yellow and you can even replace it right on top of the raw sienna, the brown colors. All right, so a good place to pause the video, take a progress photo, and move right into continuing to paint your background. So we're grabbing that raw sienna again, applying it rather thick. I did not let my background dry um, as I moved into this step. And doing the same thing, we're slapping a lot of that yellow on there, we're overlapping the raw sienna. Um, and then you saw where I kind of wiped the brush off every now and then to wipe off the excess paint and then going back with light pressure and just playing with the blending of the two colors. All right, now we're going just a touch darker, so that raw sienna with a little bit of black towards the edges. Um, we don't want this color next to the figure, so we want the edges of our canvas to be a little bit darker. And then now we're going to move right into that straight black, and we're going to fill in the bottom, and then we're going to blend this into the raw sienna edges. So again, this darkest area, this black is going to be at the bottom underneath the cello, and then it's going to kind of um, kind of curve up the edges um, on the sides of the canvas. And again, play with this. Get your background to where you want um, at this point while your paint is wet, because we will not come back to the background after this step is finished. And if you're holding your breath, make sure you take a big inhale, take your progress photo. You're doing a great job. So now I'm moving down to the small pointy brush. We're going to do the skin tone. So I start with white and a touch, a tiny, tiny amount of raw sienna. You are more than welcome to change the skin tone for your figure. Um, you can use white with a little bit of red uh, for one skin tone. You could even use more of the raw sienna and even raw sienna and um, burnt sienna mixture. And if you even want to go a little bit darker, you can mix your raw sienna and black. But please feel free to make it whatever you want for your painting. So we're filling in um, the arms, the chest, the face, and we're laying a base color. Then I'll have you take a progress photo and we'll go right in with putting highlights in. And we'll be putting that direct white on top of this color. Now she does have a hand um, at the base of the stem of the cello in the body. So make sure you get that section as well. I'll be painting that uh, right here. Um, there we go, doing great. And as you work in smaller and smaller spaces, if you are noticing that your brush is kind of shaky, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the, brush to the canvas, that will make it a little bit easier for you. All right, so again, you can pause your video at any point and then just notice observe where I am placing this white and I'm placing it and then I'm going to go back and wipe the brush off and we'll go back and blend it in with that base skin tone. So if you did a different skin tone color, um, you might not want to use white. You might want to use a little bit of yellow if you had a tan, a more tan skin tone, um, but adjust to what you might need. And if you're not sure, just leave a comment and I will um, reply with a uh, recommended color combo. All right, so now we're going to put shadows in. So we're going to add a little more raw sienna to that mixture and then a touch of black, but be very sparing with the amount of black that you put in there. Uh, we just kind of want to hint. And same thing, we're going to place this in a few areas and then wipe off the brush and go back and kind of blend it in. Uh, this particular painting, because it is a little tighter composition, you're going to be working on your brush control. So kind of treating the brush like a pencil and using just the tip of the brush and remembering that less is more. So just a hint of a highlight and just a hint of a shadow is going to give enough information for the brain to um, render it kind of a 3D object and understand what we're looking at. You're doing a great job. Remember to breathe. <laughs> If you are inclined to do something that I do not do, trust your instincts and go right ahead and do that. Um, big portion of art is about learning to just trust your instincts and get creative. And it looks like I forgot a highlight on there for the collarbone. 
um, just go back to your white and you can add that. And you can kind of go back and forth between your highlight and your shadow value. So another place to take a progress photo, we're going to move into Burnt Sienna as we fill in her hair. And we're going to fill in that whole area and then we use a mixture of that Burnt Sienna and black to uh, put some shadows on there. Again, full permission if you want to give different hair color, different hairstyle, um, anything you want to do. All right, so here you can see I'm adding a little bit of that black and burnt sienna kind of on the back of her neck. It'll be the bottom of her bun and then just maybe another little spot right in there. All right, you guys are doing great. So feel free to take another picture if you want. We're going to move into purple and paint her dress. And I did touch add a touch of white, um, but I kind of like it a bit more of the deeper purple. So feel free to make the shade you want. And same thing, we're going to fill in the dress with purple. Then we're going to use purple and black for a shadow. And then we'll do a little bit of white with highlights. So we are trying to kind of build on the skills and strengthen your observation, as well as strengthen your comfort level with the tools and the pressure of the brush. Painting is something that just gets better and more comfortable with more and more practice. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of purple and black. And again, a little bit of black goes a long way. And just observe where I place this. Now, if you notice that you uh, place your shadow and it's not dark enough, go right ahead and make it a little bit darker by adding more black. Um, again, just adjust for what you need using the video as a base guideline. All right, and then yeah, clean your brush really good. We're going to do the same thing with white on the opposite plate side of the shadow. And we're just going to place it on the dress, wipe the brush off, and go back and blend it into the purple. And again, that purple paint, the dress is still wet, so that's what's allowing us to blend this color into the base. All right, another place to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're going to move into yellow and raw sienna and um, start filling in the cello. So we're going to kind of fill that front, the face of the cello in, and then we'll go to a little bit darker shades as we get to the side and then put some details on top of it. I am using student grade paint, so I'm applying this a little bit thicker because my lighter colors are a bit more transparent. So feel free to adjust for what you need for your tools. So you can either apply your paint thicker or if you need to do two coats, um, just let it dry and then apply another coat on top of it. All right, so now we're going to move in with a little more of the raw sienna, um, just basically darkening the mixture you were just using. And we're going to use that on the side of the cello and for the stem. And again, remember to breathe as you are applying the paint and just kind of stay within the lines. You're doing a great job. And yeah, I just a little more raw sienna for the stem so it's a little bit darker and going right on top of those traceable lines. And at this point, we should have our entire canvas filled in with paint. So if you do have any spaces that you can see the canvas, just go back with the appropriate color and fill it in. So now we're going to use the raw sienna with a little bit of black, um, just making it a touch darker. And again, just kind of observe where you see me place this. Um, these are going to be the shadow elements kind of on the side. And if you need to adjust um, your color to make it a little darker or lighter, feel free to do that. So again, those shadows, we're going to be um, kind of right under that lip and at the bottom of the cello. And then we will put a little bit of a shadow on um, that stem. All right, doing a great job. And again, remember, if your brush is kind of shaky, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, um, it'll make it a little bit easier as we do some of these smaller lines. All right, so grabbing some of that burnt sienna, just going a little bit darker. Um, if yours wasn't dark enough, um, you can do this. If you did already make yours kind of dark at the base of the cello, you can skip that step. 
And as you get into the groove of painting, I do want you to look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. Um, it does look different, and this is more of the uh, normal viewing point for artwork when we look at it from a distance. All right, here you can see I grabbed a little bit of the white and we're putting the highlights on. And again, just kind of going back with that wet on wet blending to where we place the white in specific areas, wiped off the brush, and then go back in and kind of blend it with that base um, paint underneath. And it is great that as you strengthen your power of observation by doing these videos um, and painting along, you'll notice that you strengthen your observation in other areas of your life too. Um, and nothing's wrong with being more observant. It just means you actually enjoy life a little more because you notice some more details. And again, if you're inclined to put a highlight somewhere, I do not trust your instincts and go right ahead and do that. If you look at it from a distance and realize that maybe you need a brighter or darker highlight, go ahead and make those adjustments as well. So at this point, anything that you are inclined to do, go right ahead and do that for your painting. If you want to make this kind of personalized and maybe put somebody's name or write a message on the back, go right ahead and do that. So we did go back to that raw sienna, burnt sienna, and kind of doing the hair, um, the little wispy hairs over her face. If you change the hairstyle um, and you don't want these, again, you can skip this step. All right. So we're still going to be using the white and we have to put the bow on there and just going right over that traceable line. Then we're going to go with some black kind of underneath that line, give it a bit of a shadow. And again, you can adjust this if you um, are a little more inclined to know all the elements um, for these musical instruments. I am definitely much more of a visual artist rather than a musical artist, but adjust this to what you need. And thank you guys so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed the process and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you liked how your paintings turned out. As you're uploading your photos to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I can't stress enough how much uh, your feedback, your sharing this with the community and sharing your photos has helped this channel grow. So please keep it up. You're doing a great job. And you're getting more people to try painting and realize how much fun they um, have during the process. So keep it up. Um, anything that you'd like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment and I will add that to my production list and get to it as quickly as I can. I am a solo producer here, so um, they do go a little bit slower than I would like, but hopefully we'll be able to bump that up one day. But either way, um, I'm still thrilled with all the pictures and the stuff that you guys are painting at home. So until next time, have a great day and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Thank you.